I've been thinking for a long time that I wanted to make an album where I pay tribute to all the great female artists that inspired me growing up. It took a while to think of exactly the singers and songs I wanted to do. I wanted each one to be an iconic song that people associated with that singer. But they had to work together well as an album. The record really expresses my love for all of these singers and my gratitude for what they've given me. Each of them taught me something and all of those lessons combined to make me who I am today. In a way, all I'm trying to do every day is live up to the examples that they set. My dream is that people will listen to my album and then want to go learn more about all of these great singers. If that happens, then I've done my job. I'm Candace Springs, and these are the women who raised me. I went to Harlem because I wanted to learn more about where these women grew up and the kinds of lives that they lived. Just walking those streets made me feel closer to them. Now that I've learned more about them, you know, I feel more of a connection to them. Through my journey, I met the coolest cat. His name is... Mark Carey. I'm a pianist and composer and band leader. Also a teacher, father, grandfather. <laughs> Back in Harlem. Back in Harlem. We went to Bill's place which is an original speakeasy where Billie Holiday first got discovered in 1933. It was amazing just to be there and feel the vibe. You know, she had quite the life. Yeah, she did. Yeah. And she sang it. Mm. That's the beauty. To me, like, in my opinion, like, what I get from her every time is, is her soul. Me too. And her heart, you know. You feel it. Yeah. You feel it. Walking the path of these women, I felt their history. Bill's place. We made it into a speakeasy without ever knowing the history that was connected with the place. It was after two years that we found out the fact that Billie Holiday was discovered here as a teenager, somewhere between 14 and 17, in 1933. Strange Fruit is, is one of the most intense songs I've ever heard. Uh, it was a poem put to music by Billie Holiday. Uh, that song, to me, it has such a visceral way of interpreting the life of the people in the South and most black people's lives at that time. The fact that her father was refused medical care and died because of that fueled her passion for the song. And it wasn't easy to sing for many reasons, mainly because politically it, it dealt with topics that people don't want to deal with. Reality, life and the life of a marginalized people. Every time Billie Holiday would perform Strange Fruit, she would tell the audience, please don't applaud after I perform this. And after she would complete the song, the lights would just go off and she would go off the stage. And when the lights come back on, she was gone. Just to, you know, kind of leave an impact. Southern trees bearing strange fruit, blood on the leaves and blood at the root, black bodies swinging in the southern breeze, strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. Southern trees strange fruit oh, blood on the leaves oh, no, no. and blood at the root black bodies swinging in the southern Billy had such a tough life. 
I learned that at age 14, she actually became a victim of sex trafficking. They didn't use that word back then, obviously, but that's really what it was. And to come back from that and make such amazing music, I think is just incredible. So you mentioned Nina Simone singing Strange Fruit, and then you realized Billie Holiday sang it before her. Mm -hmm. I almost had the same experience, too. And, mm -hmm. and both versions, just, you know, they get me every time I hear mm -hmm. it. Um, but I heard Billie do it, and then heard the story of how she came out during that time, and yeah, how hard it must have been to come out and do that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like, so, that's so crazy. Because, yeah. Like, to talk about something as brutal as lynching mm. and to create art from it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I get emotional every time I hear it. Play. Even, even, you know, pastoral scenes mm. of the yeah. Garden. So, yeah. It, it's, it, the song is a melodic and lyrical juxtaposition of right. like this beautiful... And bitter. Exactly, a strange fruit. Right. Fruit is supposed to be something that's delicious and sweet. Mm -hmm. Billie Holiday influenced me by pushing through the pain with her music, with her voice, with her tone, with her texture with her strength. Strange and bitter songs that are on The Women Who Raised Me are just songs that I've learned, man, since I was about maybe eight, nine, ten years old to now I'm 30. And starting like with Nina Simone is one of my biggest influences. My dad used to play me her records when I was a like, little girl. And I would ask him like, who is this? Because her voice was so distinct and I was really drawn to it. And he's like, this is Nina Simone. And you know, she plays piano and she sings. And, you know, she plays classical, everything. So I was really drawn to her for that. And I got into classical music later, so I started playing you know, a little bit of like Chopin to Beethoven. <laughs> Eventually that's kind of where I got the idea to put the song together for I Put a Spell on You. Nina Simone raised me was she gave me confidence, she gave me attitude, and I really look up to her versatility. I would call her an empath in a way, you know. I could feel from her that she could feel the pain of her people. 
and she didn't hold that back. You could tell by the songs she sang, Mississippi Goddamn, and To Be Young, Gifted, and Black, and you know, Four Women. We were in the middle of a sound check, and I was playing it, and something hit me one day. I put a spell on you, put that together. That's something Nina would do that's anyway. Exactly and that's what I was yeah, saying. That's exactly something Nina would do. One thing that all these women have in common is that they were strong women, and uh, they would play their instruments, they would take their voice, and just make it, you know, something original, something that it's timeless that people will always go back and remember. And I want to set an example. Like, my, my, I, have an all, I have an all female band, Anissa Strings and Taylor Moore. They are just some of the most fantastic musicians I've ever, ever come across. <laughs> and they inspire me. And just like these women, like Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday, even like, like the things that they went through during their lives, I look up to them and have so much respect for, you know, what they went through. Well, the first time I met Candace Springs, it was amazing. I mean, I was in the studio, we were getting ready for our first rehearsal, and she walked into the studio, and immediately it was just um, very refreshing. There aren't too many configurations that I have been where it's been all young female women of color. I think that Taylor and I are so used to accommodating other artists that we both are listeners, we're patient, we are really good followers, but Candace is such a good leader that she allows us to give our input, our feedback. She welcomes our creative ideas and that just makes it such a beautiful palette for creative input. I actually heard Ella sing was at the Nashville Jazz Workshop and um, a little bit through my father as well but I really got into her at that workshop when I was around you know, 15 16 years old listening to all her stuff the riff and the scatting she does and her pitch just knocked me off my feet and <laughs> it stuck with me since I was like this this girl is no joke so she ended up just being one of my all-time favorites and then I heard her do angel eyes and it touched me I was like this is this is a timeless piece right here. And why my angel lies ain't here. Come on, guys, something. And why my angel lies in here. Oh, no. The song performed mainly by Ella was just an amazing uh, song at the time. And to this day, it still has the same weight, even though Ella's not here. But, you know, when I heard Candace sing it, it just, it brought back the same feeling. So that song just brings me to tears every time. No one sounds like Ella. All these women have this beautiful tone. And ultimately, I think that's what I got most out of the women who raised me. They all have tone. They all have this gorgeous texture. They're all strong women. They're all beautiful women, and their voices are timeless. Song tells a story. Carmen was such a beautiful person, although she had a, a, a very sharp personality. 
if you ever really did talk to her. She, she didn't hold her tongue, which none of these women did. And, and I think that's really one of the most important lessons that, that I could take away. How do we go about this music in a way that we can really be authentic to ourselves? There's so much color in the way she expresses it, and just so much attitude to you feel it. I want to inspire people the same way these women inspired me through their music. To see a talent like Candace, who has de been developed and mentored to such a degree that she has been, this lets me know that the music is strong and it's being passed on. When I heard Candace earlier, you know, I can hear the essence of the blues and the gospel in her sound, you know. So she generates what, without knowing, you know, or maybe she does know, you know, but she's an extension of all the experiences that we brought to America, you know. Started with the field holler. The field holler became gospel music. The gospel music became the blues, you know. But the essence of the blues is what makes our music what it has become. I don't just want to walk in the footsteps of these women, I want to continue the footsteps. I don't want to just retrace what they've done, I want to keep the path going and add our own, you know, perspective of where we are in our time, what we're going through currently, and continue it on, not only with these songs, but with our creative energy and as we continue to write and create music that continues the legacy of these women. There's a long line through all of these singers. Each one influenced the next one, all the way down to today. I just want to be part of that chain, and hopefully other women will follow after me, and we can support one another and keep this chain going. You know, that's what this music is about. It's, it's really just passing on an oral tradition uh, of a marginalized people. I mean, this music started as our way of of basically communicating. I mean, we weren't allowed to read. We weren't allowed to love. I mean, we weren't allowed to think damn near. On Sundays, we had time to worship. And in our worship, we dealt with music. And the music has always been, you know, our way of communicating the most deep, deepest things in our, in our life, you know? So I think, I'm thankful for the music for that. With this album, The Women Who Raised Me, I want people, I want women of all colors, of all races, all nationalities, to see themselves.